The Nutcracker. Illustrated by Valeria De Campo, based on the New York City Ballet. Production of George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. It was Christmas Eve in the Stahlbaum's house. And like children everywhere, Marie and Fritz were so excited that they could feel their toes tingle. Their parents were decorating the Christmas tree before the big holiday party, and Marie and Fritz were not allowed into the great room until it was done. They jostled each other to sneak a peek at the glittering tree through the keyhole. At last, the guests arrived, and the doors were thrown and everyone cried as they joyfully filled the festive room. The children danced and played and everyone was merry until the lights flickered and the room grew dark. A mysterious man with a young boy entered from the shadows. The man was dressed all in black with a huge fluttering cape. The children scurried to hide behind their parents just as, they, as he paused and flung back his cape over his shoulder. Ah, there was nothing to fear. It was just Herr Drossenmeyer, Marie's beloved godfather. She flew into his arms with, for a hug and shyly met his young nephew. Herr Drossenmeyer was a toy inventor and a visit from him was always full of surprises. The curious children their eyes full of wonder gathered around huge, three huge boxes he had brought with him. Suddenly the boxes sprang open and out leaped one life-size doll, then another, and then another. The dolls danced for the delighted crowd. As the celebration continued, Herr Drosenmeyer beckoned to Marie. He had a special gift for her, a nutcracker. The Nutcracker was dressed as a handsome soldier with a white beard. Herr Dressenmeyer showed Marie how the Nutcracker could open and snap his mouth to crack nuts for everyone. Crack, crack. Marie was enjoying cracking nuts and passing them out to the children when suddenly jealous Fritz swooped in and snatched the Nutcracker from her. He swung it around the room and smashed it down onto the floor with a loud bang. Marie burst into tears. Her beloved Nutcracker was broken. But Herr Drossenmeyer knew just how to fix the Nutcracker. He tied a scarf around the Nutcracker's head like a bandage and handed him back to Marie, who cradled him in her arms. Then Herr Drossenmeyer's nephew gave Marie a tiny bed that was the perfect size for a nutcracker, and Marie nestled him in it to rest. The party was coming to a close, and everyone joined in for one last grand dance. When the music ended, the guests bundled up and made their way out into the frosty night air. Marie waved goodbye to her dear godfather and his handsome nephew. It had been a long evening, and it was time for bed. During the night, Marie awoke, remembering that the Nutcracker was alone downstairs in his bed. She ran down to scoop him up. With the Nutcracker safely in her arms, she curled up on the sofa and drifted back to sleep in the soft glow of the Christmas tree. She hadn't been asleep for long when Herr Drossenmeyer slipped back into the house to properly mend the nutcracker. He gently slid him out of Marie's arms, repaired him under the light of the moon and disappeared into the darkness. But then strange things began to happen. At the stroke of midnight, Marie was pulled from her sleep by the clock chimes. She rubbed her eyes in surprise. Great big mice appeared from the shadows and began to scurry across the room. With a rumble and a shake, the tree began to grow before her eyes. 
The lights were flashing brightly as it rose higher and higher. Marie had never seen anything so big. Then Fritz's toy soldiers sprang to life. They marched into battle um, the, night, the mice, and the mice were led by the fierce and terrible Mouse King who wore a shiny crown on his head. Then the Nutcracker himself came to life, growing until he was the size of Marie. His bed, now huge, spun around and around. The Nutcracker leaped out of his bed and led the battle against the mice. The Mouse King towered over the Nutcracker, taunting him when a thick, thinking Marie threw her slipper and when a quick thinking Marie threw her slipper, slipper and it landed on the king's head. He turned to look away and the nutcracker toppled him over. The nutcracker triumphantly claimed the mouse king's crowd, crown in victory. In that moment, the ancient spell that had been cast on the nutcracker was broken. He transformed into a handsome prince who looked very much like Herr Drossenmeyer's nephew. The prince gallantly placed the crown on top of Marie's head and held and led her by the hand into the starry night beyond her house and deep into the forest toward the Christmas star. Snow began to fall and the glistening flakes began to dance. The prince took Marie on a fantastic journey. They boarded, boarded a cozy walnut boat and sailed into the night, soon landing in an enchanted kingdom called the Land of Sweets. The Land of Sweets was a magical place filled with candy dripping with in icing and magnificent, delicious colors as far as the eye could see. News of their arrival traveled fast and Marie and the prince were greeted by the sugar plum fairy who reigned over the land. She welcomed them with a curtsy and with a wave of her sparkly wand, a host of delights from her kingdom appeared before them. The prince told the story of their great battle with the mouse king. Oh, you are both very brave, the sugar plum fairy said. Then she invited them to celebrate by settling in two magnificent candy thrones with big bowls of chocolate, cake, and ice cream set before them. The sugar plum fairy summoned everyone into the land of sweets to dance for the prince and Marie in honor of their victory. First, there was a delightful dance of spicy Spanish hot chocolate, heralded by the call of trumpets and snapping fingers. Next came the mysterious Arabian coffee dance that ended with a tinkling of tiny cymbals, giving way to an explosive leaps and turns of Chinese tea. The jumping candy canes emerged next, leaping high into the air and dancing through hoops. What could come after candy canes? Marzipan, shepherd dresses, stepped out, tiptoeing delicately, while playing their flutes. The biggest surprise of all was the gigantic Mother Ginger who swaggered before them. All of a sudden, eight tiny clowns called pillow chanels sprang from beneath her skirt and danced to the rhythm of her tambourine. As Mother Ginger scooted her children off, a garden of flowers appeared amid the blooms of shimmering dewdrop fairy. And with every step, she brought every single petal to life in blossoming swirls of pink. Final, finally, the regal sugar plum fairy returned with her noble cavalier. They floated gracefully, gracefully about, and then she spun faster and faster before leaping into the ar in his arms. And it was also deliciously marvelous. With another wave of her wand, the sugar plum fairy summoned her whole kingdom for a joyous farewell celebration. As much as they wanted to stay, it was time for Marie and the prince to leave the land of sweets and return to their families. 
As the lovely soft snow continued to fall, they climbed into the beautiful sleigh pulled by magical reindeer. Marie and the prince turned to wave goodbye to their new friends as they rose higher and higher into the sky, away from their sweet celebration and into the starry night. The end. And this tells about some fun facts about George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. The Christmas tree grows to a full height of, eight, of 41 feet and weighs one ton. So if you have the chance to go to see the ballet, um, they have it plain and most every major city in Salt Lake City does have it. There's 50 pounds of paper snow is used to create the snowstorm at the end of the first act in the ballet. And there are 144 jingle bells on each of the candy cane costumes. And Mother Ginger's skirt weighs 85 pounds and is nine feet wide. And there are nearby nearly 1 million watts of lights used in the ballet's uh, grand finale. And each performance features more than 50 dancers and more than 60 children from the School of American Ballet, the official school of New York City Ballet. And more than 150 costumes are worn by the cast and 62 magician, musicians play in the orchestra. So the Nutcracker was created by the composer Peter Tykowski and the choreographers are Marius Pe Petipa and Lev Ivanov. And this was first performed um, at the Marzinsky Theater in St. Petersburg, Russia on December 18th, 1892. The ballet was not initially considered a success. So that's interesting. And then George Balanchine was born in St. Petersburg in 1904 and performed the Nutcracker as a student at the Marzinsky Theater and decided to choreograph his own version of the ballet as his first full-length work for the New York City Ballet, which he had co-founded in 1948. Premiering on February 2nd, 1954, Balanchine's production of The Nutcracker was an extraordinary success and has helped to establish both the ballet and his score as a perennial favorites around the world. That is so true. Many, many people go see The Nutcracker.